Here is the latest from Oil City News on K2 Radio. Last night in Casper, a man allegedly pepper sprayed a liquor store clerk, stole over $2,000 worth of cigarettes, and then led police on a chase before his arrest on Tuesday night. Now, the clerk was able to call 911 during the robbery. The suspect fled. Police were able to apprehend them, but not before a high-speed chase that started uh, on North Poplar Street. Um, Then the suspect turned onto King Boulevard along the Three Crowns golf course. Spike strips were deployed and the vehicle disabled. The suspect fled on foot, but was tracked down by canine Buster. The suspect was taken to the hospital for medical clearance, and two passengers were interviewed at the police station. Formal charges are expected this week in the Trona County Circuit Court. We do have a video of the pursuit. You can find it at k2radio.com. And we also post our articles to our Facebook page. A recent wild file looks at federal data showing the average per capita income for a Teton County resident was $471,751 last year. That is the highest in the nation with a per capita income approaching half a million dollars annually. Teton County's figure is 6.7 times the nation's average which was $69,810. Last week, Jackson Town Council member Jonathan Schechter wrote in a newsletter that Teton County's uh, 2023 income was more than seven times the near $66,000 average of Wyoming's other 22 counties. Schechter wrote about this in a Co-Thrive newsletter. He titled it, It Ain't Me, Babe, to underscore that super wealthy individuals raised Teton's average annual income and that Jane and John Doe aren't sipping Dom Perignon from Neiman Marcus Flutes at happy hour. While there are no median uh, county figures for 2023 based on the same IRS data, there is other information that indicates it's not just one or two people who are boosting that per capita income for those residents. Continued demographic shifts may be in store, potentially contributing to the community's traffic congestion, income inequality, and affordable housing shortages. And we might be wondering how this is going to affect the rest of us here in Wyoming. Uh, Schechter warns that the incoming administration has pledged to further cut taxes for the rich. He's saying Jackson Hole and similar communities will need to brace themselves for round two of recent years' of craziness regarding investment income, home prices, and the difficulty difficulties of housing for anyone but the well-to-do. And despite having just 4% of Wyoming's population, uh, the Teton County residents earn 23% of the state's total personal income and essentially half of its total investment income last year. Wyoming's own analysts acknowledge some of Teton County's outlying statistics. They generated more than 50% of the state's mandatory 3% lodging tax uh, this in this fiscal year, 2024. That's according to Wenlin Liu, who is the state's chief economist with the Wyoming Economic Analysis Division. In other news, I wanted to highlight the University of Wyoming's meat judging team. Of course, it's no surprise that the Cowboy State's University is winning awards in this department. During the fall, they traveled to four different competitions around the country and consistently placed at the top. College meat judging is like no sport you've ever seen before. Here, students compete against one another to see which team can best evaluate cuts of beef, pork, and lamb. Competitors are evaluating the amount of fat and muscle on beef carcasses. They're looking at the marbling of steaks and certain cuts of meat. According to one judge, the skill set of a champion meat judge is both eminently teachable and difficult to master. It takes quick decision making, critical reasoning, self-assurance, and above all the ability to quiet one's mind for up to six hours standing in frigid temperatures and total silence in the meat judging coolers. Hats off to all the competitors. Uh, These contests ultimately prepare students for careers within the meat industry and related fields. It goes simply beyond ranking meat. It's serving as a training ground for future professionals in the livestock and meat sector. And finally, just a quick announcement for listeners. Uh, the Tate Museum's Open Holiday House is happening this Saturday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. It's a free event, and it will be open to the public. Also, Santa Soros will be there again this year. Reporting in Casper, this is Colby